How often should you switch to a different video editing software? Well, I don't know. It's up to you. Whenever you want, I guess. Alrighty, that answers that. See you next time. Obviously, I'm being sarcastic, but that answer is not entirely false. You see, when it comes to switching editing tools and finding a new workflow, you first have to reflect and evaluate your situation to understand what you're looking for in the first place. So here are three main points that you can use to guide yourself to know when you're ready to make the switch. Ugh. All right, give me a second. The first one is when you're feeling stuck or have that feeling of wanting to expand your knowledge. Usually at this point, you feel that you know everything about the current editing software you're using right now, which may not be accurate because there's always updates and something new to learn. However, you feel that way because of the way you're utilizing it. Perhaps you've exhausted all the tools it has to offer for your current editing style and you need something new, something like the excitement of learning a new editing software and unlocking new potential again. Remember that craving for learning a new style or trying a new tool is good and it leads for your editing skills to increase. But do not confuse this with burnout or creator's block. That's why it's important to ask yourself these questions to better understand where you're at mentally. Instead, try giving yourself a break and do some of the things that you enjoy doing outside of editing. And when you least expect it, a new idea or new motivation will come and you will have your trusty familiar video editing tool at your disposal to make that idea into a video much faster. The next point is when you have absolutely no choice but to switch your editing workflow because that software has a bunch of problems like lag, freezes, crashes, etc. Or your system and specs are not able to handle that editing software. Solution? You can avoid all your frustrations and just go to a different, more optimized editing software that you know has a good reputation. Disclaimer, I'm not saying that there's a perfect editing software that doesn't crash. They all crash once in a while, but I am saying that you might want to avoid ones that do it in excess. On the other hand, you might be using software that's too demanding for your computer specs. So in that case, I suggest looking for a different software and checking the system requirements before installing just to make sure your system can handle it. The next point is using Motion Array. Now I'm kidding, but I do want to thank them for partnering up with the channel. Now, if you've never heard of them before, Motion Array is basically a one-stop shop for all your video post-production needs. They contain a large array of premium quality templates, stock videos, and music for you to download to help you make better videos faster and easier. All you gotta do is make an account with them and you will have access to all of the free assets available and you can find whatever you need and download it in just a few clicks, just that easy. And each template and asset also comes with a tutorial tutorial just in case you need some help. Or you can try one of the many subscription plans that Motion Array offers and download whatever you want and use it whenever you want to. You can cancel at any time and all your assets will still be covered. So if you want to try it out, you can use my link in the description and try it out for free. And if you decide to register for any type of subscription, you'll be making yourself a favor and you'd be supporting the channel as well. So thank you. This brings me to the last point of this list, which is having the wish to diversify your tools. Like in the first point, once you get familiar with your editing tool of choice, you get a good grasp of its strengths and weaknesses. This is usually accompanied with the urgent need of finding another editing tool that has better qualities in terms of editing capability. You may want to replace your old software with a different one or still use it and just use the second software as an option. That way you're diversifying your skills amongst different editing software. You'll be able to make better decisions on where to edit your next project or scene, saving more time and being more efficient. And remember, it's never a bad thing to know how to use multiple editing software. With that note, I do have to warn you, you have to be careful to not consistently jump from editing software to editing software. That just defeats the whole purpose of being creative, efficient, and knowledgeable. Just imagine you changing editing programs often. You won't get any videos done because you're still learning the basics of the program and you won't have a profound knowledge of it because you keep switching, messing up your entire efficiency and workflow. It's just something to keep in mind. Remember, balance is important. So in my case, most of you know that I tend to use different video editing software for the reviewing series that I have, but that is strictly for testing and for me to be more familiar with the program itself to give a more insightful review. However, I have been using DaVinci Resolve as my preferred editing tool and it has been a great experience learning this tool with new effects, techniques, and overall building a better workflow from it. 
For those of you who are real viewers of the channel, many of you know that I used to use Sony Vegas for the longest time and I also had a good experience with it as well and then shot cut before that. So as you can see, it has been a steady progression in my switching habits despite me making quick stops using and testing other software along the way and I learned a lot from it. Now I'm capable of using any software that I have used before and understand how to do certain things and be aware of their capabilities. But I do have my favorites none of the less and nothing is stopping you from doing the same. You just got to recap and know where you want to go. Hopefully these three guiding points that I use helps you to find your footing to make your decision. At the end of the day, what matters is what skills you can transfer onto the next tool to make your videos better over time. So hopefully that answers your question. If you have any other questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.